Hello students, uh, welcome to this lecture. Uh, today uh, we will discuss on the applications of system of linear equations. Uh, what we will do is basically we will go through the business and economic problems and, uh, and we will use that uh, to solve uh, using the system of linear equations. Basically, uh, in this, uh, uh, under this topic, uh, we'll go through how to solve the system of linear equations uh, under the application uh, using uh, the matrix algebra and uh, uh, determinant method. So, the objective of uh, today's lecture is to solve uh, business and economic problems using system of uh, linear equations. So, whenever you are trying to solve the business or economic problems using system of linear equation, you should follow these three steps. Uh, uh, first thing is that once you go through the information uh, or data given in the question, first you should transform that information in the form of system of linear equations. First step is to get the system of uh, system of linear uh, equations. So, given the particular problem, you should get the system of linear equation based on the problem. So, once you get uh, the system of linear equation, then second step is to transform that system of linear equation in the form of matrix. Whatever system of linear equation you obtain from the quotient, you transform or represent in the form of matrix. Once you do that, you can solve these uh, uh, equations in the matrix either using uh, solve this using either using uh, you can solve using uh, matrix method uh, matrix method or uh, using uh, Kramer's rule Kramer's rule. So basically, you have to. Uh, keep in mind these three steps whenever you solve the application of system of linear equations. So now let us go through our example one question uh, under application of system of linear equation. An amount of Niltrum 5000 is put into three investments at the rate of interest 6%, 7% and 8% per annum respectively. The total annual income uh, is nil term 358. If the combined income from the first two investment is nil term, third, nil term 70 more than the income from the third, find the amount of each investment using matrix algebra and using Kramer's rule. So here we are asked to solve this problem using both the method first using the matrix method and second using the Kramer's rule so now let me explain this question clearly uh, be before we go to the uh, main solution so what is saying is that we have the total total amount of Niltrum 5000 we have a total amount of Niltrum 5000 and this total amount of yield term 5000 is put into three investments. So let's say uh, our investment first one is X and second one is our investment is Y and our third investment uh, let us denote by the variable Z. So if you say that uh, our amount of yield term 5000 is put into three investment, so our three investment can be X, Y and Z. Okay, so, so this is our three investment according to the quotient given here and then what it's saying is that the amount of nil term 5000 is put into three investment at the rate of interest. It's saying uh, the rate of interest is 6% for this X and 7% uh, for Y and 8% for this uh, investment uh, 
Z. C. And uh, the total annual income uh, obtained from investing at this uh, rate of interest for each uh, investment, if you add this total investment, if you add this total investment, the income you obtain from these three investment is saying the total income is uh, nil trump 358. Okay? And, uh, and next part of the question is that if the income from the first two investment is investment, if the first two investment is combined, then if the first two investment is combined together, then it should be equal to the investment of third uh, plus nil term 70. More means it should be plus. So what he's saying is that if you combine the uh, first two investment, our first investment is 6% in X plus second investment is 7% in Y. If you combine, means if you add this two investment, it should be equal. This means it should be equal to the investment, that is investment, third investment, that is Z. More means plus your term 70. So, since we have three variables, you should have three equations. So, so our first equation is that uh, the variable, the first equation we obtain from this question is that the amount of Niltrum 5000 is put into three investment. Our three investment are X plus Y plus C. This is our three investment. Okay. This investment is done from the total amount of Niltrum 5000. This should be our first equation. So since we have three variables, we should have three equations. And uh, second equation we obtain is that the three investments are given at the rate of interest 6% for the first uh, investment, which is X, and 7% for the second investment, Y, and investment for the third is given 8%. So the, if you invest this uh, uh, amount of uh, at this rate of interest for three investment, the total annual income from this investment should to be nil term 358. So that means 6% you invest in X, 7% you invest in Y, and 8% you invest in Z. The total income, if you add this all this investment, total income should be 358. This should be our second equation. And from where do you get a third equation? Our last equations come from this sentence. If the combined investment, uh, if the combined income from the first two investment is nil term 70, more than the income from the third. What is saying is that if you, if you combine or add the income of the first two investment, that is 6% in X and 7% in Y, that income should be equal to the nil term 70 more than the third investment. Third investment is 8% of Z. Okay. Now let us go to the solution to the problem number one or example one. So let us solve uh, the using the first method which is matrix algebra. Sometimes it is known as matrix inverse method, sometimes it is known as uh, matrix method, sometimes known as is matrix algebra method. So it uh, all means the same thing. So, so in this case, uh, we already know that there are three variables, right? So you can let uh, X, uh, Y, and Z be the investment. You can be the, be the investments investment uh, at the rate of uh, rate of uh, 6% 7% and 8% uh, respectively right so that means uh, we are uh, denoting that x is the investment at 6% y at 7 and z at 8% so once you let these variables then you can directly come to the in uh, equations. First equation is that if you add these three investments x, y, and z, it will come to nil term 5000. In other words, nil term 5000 is put into three investments x, y, and z. 
This is our first equation. And the second equation is that Neutrum, uh, the rate of 6% investment is put into X and 7% is invested in Y and 8% invested in Z. And if you combine these three investments, the income from these three investments should be equal to Neutrum 358. So this is our second equation. And how do you get third equation? Our third equation says that if you combine the income from the first and second investment, that is 6% in X and 7% in Y, if you combine these two uh, investments, it should be equal to the uh, third investment plus 70, you'll drum 70. So this should be our equation 3. So once you get uh, this uh, system of linear equation, you can do some simplification. Okay, so if you want to simplify this uh, first equation, the first equation you can keep as it is, it's our first equation. To simplify our second equation, to remove this decimal point, you can multiply by 100. If you multiply by 100 to the second equation, you will get 6x plus 7y plus 8z equals to uh, 35,800, that's our second equation. And similarly, you can simplify our third equation by multiplying 100. So we get 6x plus 7y equals to 8z plus uh, 7000, which is our third equation. So you can simplify this equation further. You can simplify these three equations further. Uh, you can keep the equation 1 as it is. 2 you can keep as it is. Equation 2 you can keep as it is. Whereas when it comes to third equation, you can take the variables on the variable side of the equation and keep the constant on the constant side of the equation. So that's why we take this variable at z on the LHS, left hand side of the equation, and you get this our third equation. So our equation formation is uh, complete. So our next uh, task is to transform or represent this given system of linear equation in the form of matrix. So once you get the system of linear equation, you can transform into matrix. So our matrix A is the coefficient matrix, which is obtained uh, uh, by taking the coefficients of our variables from the uh, equation, which is 1, 1, 1, 6, 7, 8, 6, 7, minus 8. That's our coefficient matrix A. And second is to get the matrix X, which is our variable matrix, which is variables involved in the system of linear equation, which is given by X, Y, and C. And the third matrix B is our co constant matrix, which is given by the constant of the equation, 535,807,000. ,000. So once you get uh, the uh, system of linear equation and uh, in the form of matrix, our next uh, step is to find uh, uh, the determinant of A or the determinant of the coefficient matrix A. Since we are trying to solve this uh, system of linear equation using matrix inverse method or matrix method, first you have to check uh, the determinant of our coefficient matrix A. So, when you solve the determinant of the matrix A, we found out that it is equals to negative 16. So since the determinant of this uh, coefficient matrix A is not equals to 0, we can say that uh, the inverse of this matrix exists and the solution for this uh, matrices can be given or obtained by using this formula. So the solution uh, for this matrix can be obtained, this system of linear equation can be obtained by using this formula x is equals to a inverse b because the determinant of a is not equal to 0, a inverse exists, if a inverse exists then you can find the solution using this formula. So now next step is to uh, follow this formula, expression given in the formula. So if you look at the expression, we have x is equals to a inverse b. That means you have to find you have to find the a inverse. So to get the a inverse, so to get the a inverse, first you have to uh, find the uh, uh, find the adjoint of a, right? So as you know, 
as you know, the formula to find the A inverse is equals to 1 by determinant of A times adjoint A. So, as you know, the formula to find the A inverse is using the formula 1 by determinant of A times adjoint A. So, that's what we did here. We, we calculated uh, the determinant as shown above. We have minus 16. 1 by determinant of A, 1 by determinant of A is 1 by negative 16. And adjoint A, this matrix is our adjoint A. So, how do you find the adjoint A? How do you find the adjoint of the matrix A? So, as you have already gone through how to find the adjoint of the matrix A, adjoint of the matrix A is the transpose of the cofactor matrix A, Cij, cofactor of the matrix A, cofactor of the matrix A, is the transpose, transpose Cij of the cofactor matrix A. So how do you get the cofactor matrix? So you have already gone through in the uh, uh, third unit. So uh, keeping that in mind, we have directly given the uh, adjoint of the matrix A. So what is adjoint of matrix? Transpose of cofactor matrix. So therefore, our A inverse is equals to 1 by determinant of A times adjoint A. So our adjoint A is equals to uh, given by the matrix 1, 1, 2, 15, 1, 96, negative 14, negative 2, 0, negative 1, and 1. This is our adjoint matrix. So, adjoint matrix, and uh, to get the inverse, you have to multiply by 1 over determinant of A, which is negative 16. So, final solution. To obtain the solution for X, the formula is A inverse times B. So A inverse, we already obtain above here, so you can bring it down as it is, 1 over negative 16 times this matrix. And what is matrix B? Matrix B is our constant matrix, which is given by 535,807,000. Uh, so finally, in order to find the value of X, you have to multiply these two matrix, okay? You have to multiply these two matrix and and finally, do the multiplication with this scalar quantity, which is 1 over negative 16, to obtain the final answer. So in this case, if you multiply this uh, matrix, these two matrix, we obtain negative 16,000, negative 35,000, and negative 28,800. And if you further do the scalar multiplication with this uh, quantity to this matrix, you obtain this values, so which is x, y, and z. So therefore, our final solution is that the x is equals to 1000, y is equals to 2200, and z is equals to 1800. So uh, now, how to solve this uh, same question, our example number one question, uh, using the second uh, method, which is using Kramer's rule. Uh, it is sometimes known as determinant method, as you have gone through before. So, when you are using this Kramer's rule, uh, I think it is much easier to solve using Kramer's rule compared to the uh, matrix method. So, what you have to do when you solve using de uh, determinant method or Kramer's rule is that, first you have to find the determinant of the coefficient matrix, the D here. D is the determinant of the coefficient matrix. So, when you find the determinant of the coefficient matrix A, our final answer we got is negative 16, okay? Once you get uh, the determinant of this uh, coefficient matrix A, uh, you have to check whether the determinant of this coefficient matrix A is uh, equals to 0 or not equals to 0. Whenever the determinant of this coefficient matrix A is not equals to 0, we say that uh, uh, the this system of linear equation has a unique uh, solution, has a unique uh, solution, has a unique solution, and the solution is can be obtained by using the formula x is equals to d1 divided by d, and y is equals to d2 divided by d, and so on, depending upon the number of variables involved in the system of linear equation. 
okay now back to the uh, solution so since our determinant of our coefficient matrix a is negative 16 which means that this system of linear equation has a solution so that means you have to find the values of x y and z in this case we have three variables x y and z to do that you can obtain the value of x using the formula d1 divided by d so that means you have to find the value of d1 so in order to find the value of d1 so you have to take the original coefficient matrix a and replace uh, the first column of this uh, coefficient matrix a by the constant matrix b and put the elements of the constant matrix b in the first uh, column of this uh, coefficient matrix a to obtain the d1 so therefore our d1 is equals to uh, negative 16000 and once you get uh, the value of uh, uh, d1 our formula to find x is d1 divided by d d1 is negative 16000 is negative 16000 divided by d is minus 16 which is equals to 1000 the value of x is 1000 next how to find the value of uh, y y is obtained using the formula d2 divided by d so how do you find d2 d2 is the determinant of the coefficient matrix after replacing the second column of the coefficient matrix a by the constant matrix b constant matrix b is uh, 5,807,000 if you replace this uh, put these values into the second column of the coefficient matrix and if you find the determinant of this matrix you will get the value of d2 which is the determinant uh, after uh, changing the values for the second column so therefore you can find the value of y using the formula d2 divided by d which is equals to 35,020 divided by negative 16 which is equals to 2200 next is how to get the value of z so value of z you can obtain by using the formula d3 divided by d how do you obtain the value of d3 it is a determinant of the coefficient matrix after replacing the third column of the coefficient matrix by our constant matrix constant matrix b so which is here so if you solve this we get our final answer for the uh, determinant uh, d3 which is equals to negative 28800 so if you plug into the formula d3 divided by d which is minus 28800 divided by minus 16 which comes to 18 so therefore the z is equals to 1800 so finally you can write that our final solution to the system of linear equation is x is equals to 1000 y is equals to 2200 and z is equals to 1800